Hello, I'm Yeonan from South Korea, and today I'll be presenting about Strabismus with the title Strabismus Addressing a Hidden Global Health Issue and Its Disparities. First, to briefly introduce myself, I'm from South Korea and I'm a rising senior in Chadwick International School in Songdo. I'm a leader of Green Team Club and was one of the leadership positions in Chadwick Seat Club. I also participated in Chadwick International Biology Research Club, Chadwick Medical Society, and Hilby World Leadership Congress and have various volunteer experiences in the medical fields. I'm interested in ophthalmology, public health, chemistry, biology, and many more. The photos at the bottom right are my previous works about strabismus. My topic for today is global eye health, especially strabismus disparities and solutions. And my purpose is to highlight a hidden issue in global health and propose solutions. And just in case some of you wonder why I am so into strabismus, as you can as you can see in the previous works I've done, the reason for that is that I have a strabismus as you can as can be seen in the photos below. So what is strabismus? According to Johns Hopkins Medicine, strabismus, which is also called a cross eye, is a misalignment of the eyes, causing one eye to deviate inwards towards the nose or outwards, while other eye remains focused. The photo below shows different types of strabismus. And why is strabismus related to global health? It is because strabismus is such a common disease to both children and adults. According to Mayo Clinic, strabismus is one of the most common eye conditions in children. 2 to 4% of children have esotropia and 1 to 1.5% of children have exotropia. This means that almost 1 out of 20 kids have strabismus. And for adults, about 2 to 4% around the world, which is roughly 162 million to 324 million people currently have strabismus. So strabismus is a critical global health issue and as it, inter as it disrupts binocular vision, impacting, vi impacting visual development and overall quality of life. It not only affects vision, but also influences social interactions, educational outcomes, and economic productivity. I'll go into more detail later, but in places with limited resources where access to eye care services is limited, it is even more challenging. So for a diagnosis of strabismus, any child older than four months who appears to have strabismus should have an eye examination of refraction and alignment and focus tests. And strabismus can be treated with prism lenses, which are special lenses that can bend light entering the eye, orthoptics, eye muscle surgery, and some more. And next are strabismus disparities. Research conducted by the University of Michigan's Kellogg Eye Center highlights disparities in the diagnosis and treatment of strabismus. And according to this research, children in low-income communities are less likely to be diagnosed with strabismus. Um, also, based on another research, Medicaid patients are significantly more likely to miss the follow-up appointment after the um, strabismus surgery with a percentage of 28.2, which is significantly higher than 9.6% 9 .6 of patients with private insurance. This is an issue because strabismus can lead to permanent vision loss and negatively impact a, cho a children's um, self-image if untreated. Also, based on the research, white children were twice as likely to be diagnosed with strabismus compared to Black and, and Hispanic children. In North Carolina, less affluent communities had a strabismus diagnosis rate of um, 0.55%, which is much lower than the statewide average of 1.11%. More affluent cities like Durham had higher diagnosis rate. So solutions in solving strabismus and its disparities is improving on education. As can be seen, the research diagnostic rate and the rate of attending follow-up appointments is lower in underserved populations. 
This results in lifelong services, which can have a negative impact on different areas. This highlights the need of education about good eye health. Also, improvements on health policy is needed. All children and adults have the right for equitable access to eye care services to diagnose and treat strabismus early. This can be done by identifying areas with higher and lower diagnostic diagnosis rate. This will help policymakers target interventions and reduce disparities. So in conclusion, my topic was global eye health, especially strabismus, disparities, and solutions. And the purpose, my, my purpose is to highlight a hidden issue in global health and its disparities and propose solutions. And the key takeaways from my presentation is that strabismus is a common eye condition affecting millions of people. It disrupts visual development, social interactions, educational outcomes, and economic productivity. Disparities in diagnosis and treatment exist, particularly affecting low-income and minority communities. And the call to action for my presentation is educating the community about the importance of eye health is needed. And we should advocate for equitable access to eye care services. Also, we should support timely diagnosis and treatment to prevent lifelong impacts. These are the acknowledgements and the link below is for my reference and citations. Thank you.